Yeah, many forms at it again. Look at this ridiculous. This should be illegal. Putting this much power on an ITX board. It's kind of stupid. So we looked at the BD790i before, and that's got a 7945H, uh, which is a very small form factor CPU that happens to be a beast. It's 16 cores, 32 threads, and uh, other specs that are impressive. Let's just see over here. Uh, 5.4 gigahertz and all that. But this one, this one is the X3D version of that chip, meaning you get 144 megabytes of desktop level cache. It's the AMD 3D Vcache technology. So you get all that on top of everything else, which really is made for extra gaming performance. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to try this with a whole bunch of new games, like Oblivion and a bunch of other things. I'm really playing a lot of Oblivion lately. Anyway, we're going to test this with a bunch of stuff. But first, I want to just test out the board, give you a tour and everything. So we're going to take a tour of the board, talk about all the specs and all the stuff you can plug up to it or all the stuff you can't plug up to it, sadly, because it doesn't have a lot of ports. Because I know you're going to install something in that PC. I Express 5.0 slot. Uh, so what am I going to install in there? Well, I've got a 4070 Super from MSI. Got another one from Gigabyte. I'm not sure which one I'm going to put in there at this point, but I'll put one of them in there and we'll test it out. I'm also going to test this directly against the previous models. We're going to figure out how much difference that AMD 3D Vcache makes. I always use OEM keys. I grab them over at whokeys.com. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30. No, we can do better. Put in TS25. Click apply. There we go. $23.22. You got Windows 11 Pro, Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Home, Windows 10 Home. And we have a couple different flavors of LTSC. 2021 gets updates until 2027. And the 2021 IoT edition gets updates until 2032. Also, if you're sick of paying that monthly fee for Office, you can get an offline version of Office. They've got 2019 and 2016. You know, 2016 will get most people by, in my opinion. You can also use the coupon code TS25 on these to save 25% on this as well. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key, and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. Now when you just look at it, you see there's a giant heat sink already on top of that. And it comes with a bracket that allows you to mount a 120 millimeter fan. So I'm going to grab a static pressure fan from Noctua because I don't want this thing to make any noise whatsoever. And then beside that, we see there's another fan and heat sink mounted right there. And that's because beneath that, we have two M.2 slots. They're NVMe PCI Express Gen 5. So yeah, they're five by four. Stupid fast right there, and that's why they need that cooling unit. Gotta keep that thing cool. As far as the memory goes, we have two DDR5 slots, but these are SO DIMM slots. They're really small. I think we could have fit some full size slots on there. I'm not sure why you'd want one over the other really at this point in time, because they're both really fast. Maybe the full size desktop uh, parts might be a little bit less expensive these days, but you can get 5200 uh, you know, speed memory. Actually, I'm gonna be putting some crucial 5600 speed memory. It's 5600 mega transfers. I'm not sure what the actual frequency is but mega transfers because that's what it feels like uh, ddr5 is weird the maximum memory is 96 gigabytes we've got wi-fi 6e and bluetooth 5.3 all right down here on the bottom we've got usb 3.2 and then we have uh, just a usb header right there beside that and then two four pin pwm fan headers there's three four pin pwm fan headers pwm yes yes of course that's what it is then we've got our 24 pin Power connector, there's also an 8-pin hiding over there. Front panel connectors over here on this side. Used to those being over here somewhere, but, you know, we don't have a ton of space right here. A lot of that's because this giant, you know, cooling unit is dominating the board layout. There's that 8-pin header. Not much else going on other than just the M.2 right here. All right, on the back, we've got our audio, and then we also have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, some USB right there. Then we have USB Type-C at 3.2. We got some USB 3 over here just hanging out. Then we have our display port and our HDMI. Not a lot of uh, options when it comes to USB. For most people, this is probably gonna be enough. But for someone like me who needs a gazillion things, I'm gonna need to run a hub. Luckily, USB 3.2 is fast enough for my needs, but it does not have USB 4 on the back. All right, on the bottom right here, we have our 16-speed PCI Express slot, Gen 5, fancy. And then right here, let's see if we can see, there's some copper heat pipes on the bottom. See if you can see through there. I get the light right on it, maybe. Maybe that way, yeah. You can see the CPU under there, just hiding. So when it comes to all the stuff that you get, I feel like I would have been happier if they gave me 
a Gen 4 M.2 and then gave me a USB-C um, type 4 or just some more USB on the back because I feel like this could really replace a lot of people's desktops but you're gonna likely want more USB. In any form if you're listening uh, micro ATX put a you know PLX chip or something in there give us more stuff. Micro ATX with this and you know extra slot so I can put one more thing in there some extra USB this th nothing else would be able to touch this when it comes to price to performance and just the size of it all. All right, let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna put this head to head, the BD790i X3D versus the old BD790i, and we'll figure out which one's gonna be best for you. All right, Oblivion Remastered is here, and it's gonna be our Unreal Engine 5 game for the, I don't know, for now until the end of time. I, I really love Oblivion. It, it's the best of the Elder Scrolls, and this is such a faithful remaster. The visuals and stuff, I did a whole video on like, how to redo all that kind of stuff because I think they were a little bit off on some of the visuals and a lot of that's Unreal Engine 5's fault and a lot of this is Unreal Engine 5's fault as well but let's just take a look at how it's running right here so 1080p ultra with no DLSS god this game <laughs> if you turn down a few of these settings you can get like 20 extra FPS with almost the exact same fidelity so running this on ultra is is a fool's errand turn down some of the settings to high instead of ultra and it'll look almost the same but anyway we're playing it on ultra and you can see we've got about a 5 FPS advantage for the X3D. 1% lows are basically the same. And then the minimum is similar performance right there. Let's go ahead and turn on DLSS and see how we're running. And right here, this is wild. Oblivion is a weird game. Maybe it's just the Unreal Engine 5, but I did not expect this. I ran this test a few times and yep, the regular CPU is tiny, tiny bit faster. Also the 1% lows. It's just a slightly smoother experience. Unexpected this is. Let's crank it up to 1440p and see how that looks. All right, 1440p running on Ultra again with no DLSS. And again, the same thing. Just a tiny bit difference. Now, this is the point where I, I noticed something. All right, let me show you how I've been testing all these things. I've been using this, and I've got the uh, GeForce 4070 Super in there. And I've been doing this. But yeah, I set this to 2565 right there. And then did a little bit of what you would call an undervolt. That's how I've been doing all these tests with both of them. And I did the exact same settings for both in my afterburner. And I also did 650 on the memory clock. This is the point where I noticed something weird. Um, with the X3D system, for some reason, the GPU was running 60 to 80 megahertz lower almost all the time. The other one was getting up to 2700, but this one was staying around 26 something. And I did the same voltages and the same everything. So the X3D throughout all the tests seemed to be running a few megahertz slower, 20 to 50, maybe up, upwards of 70, 80 sometimes. So that could be the difference. And I'm running the exact same curve exactly the same. So that's a little bit weird, which makes me feel like I probably could bring this up a little bit when it comes to uh, running the, the 4070 with the X3D and it should be just fine. This is also a very conservative thing. I could probably crank this up another 100 megahertz and it would be just fine. So that could be the difference. I feel a little bad because it's not exactly apples to apples, but that's how the tests were coming out. Anyway, let's move on up and take a look at Oblivion in 1440p and 1440p Again, very similar results, both playable, but the regular is a tiny bit faster, probably with that tiny frequency advantage it had. Let's turn on DLSS and see how that's doing. This is such a close race that it's kind of silly, but uh, the 1% lows are finally better with the X3D, but this is, again, almost identical performance right here between the two. All right, let's take a look at Baldur's Gate 3. I'm running this at 1080p on Ultra. I like to use SMAA. I just, I like it. I don't know. And then I have no DLSS. So this is the way I prefer to play it if I'm playing 1080p. And you can see here, the X3D is quite a bit faster. That average, we're getting like an extra 30 FPS almost. The 1% lows, similar, but it's just all around quite a bit faster. And I like to do the 1080p just so you can really see the muscle. Because once you start to crank it up a little bit, it's not going to be that much of a difference, but yeah. Now, if you're an NVIDIA fan and you just love them generated frames, well, I'm going to turn on DLSS and try this again. And you can see the X3D again, really big advantage, 222.7 average versus 184.5 average. 
So the X3D, that extra 3D cache in Baldur's Gate 3 makes a pretty big difference at 1080p. In 1440p, you can see the gap has been completely closed almost. A very similar performance and the 1% lows are better with the regular CPU, not the X3D. I've noticed that's a, kind of a trend with some of these games, but yeah, check that out. Not that big of a delta when it comes to 1440p gaming. Let's turn on DLSS and see what that looks like. All right, 1440p with DLSS on the quality setting. And now we got a, a much bigger advantage for the 7945HX 3D. So DLSS does, I guess, um, tone down what's required of the GPU, I guess. But I'm not sure where the bottleneck is there for this. It might be the CPU, but I don't know. But the, the 3D cache is doing a lot better right here. And then our 1% lows are still better with the regular CPU. But neither one of these, I mean, that's not enough for me to even care. That's silly. It's just silly, good performance. So I'm still sticking with the X3D. All right, let's try Cyberpunk. I'm gonna do 1080p ultra ray tracing. And this is with DLSS off. And there you can see, uh, yeah, just a little bit better, about four FPS difference between the X3D and the regular CPU. And then you can also see the 1% lows were slightly better, but not enough to make that big of a deal. But yeah, the X3D is a little bit faster here. Let's put DLSS on quality and try again. And whoa, that's a bit of a jump. So it's like with DLSS on, it's like the CPU has a little bit more room to perform, which is interesting. So yeah, DLSS, quite a bit better. All right, 1440p, again on Ultra RTX, no DLSS, almost identical. Just a couple FPS faster here for the X3D. But you can see very, very similar performance between the two. And again, when we put the quality DLSS setting on, we have a little bit more performance here for the X3D, just a little bit. It's not as, not as big of a difference when we're talking about 1440p, but you know, a few extra FPS is nice. The 1% lows are a little bit higher again. So that is that weird trend I'm seeing. Let's put them to the test with superposition. First off, starting at 4K with the optimized setting. And you can see the X3D had a score of 15,648 versus 15,352. And then the performance is almost the same on the 4K optimized. So right here, 1080p on medium with superposition, you can see the results, again, almost the same. The, the max is a little bit higher here with the regular CPU versus the X3D, but the average overall was a few FPS faster, but both of these are so stupid fast that I don't think it's going to matter. And finally, let's take a look at Unigen Valley. The X3D had a score of 10604 versus 10328. This is at 1080p on the high setting. And there you can see just a very slight advantage here with the X3D. All right, take a look at that single core speed faster than the 11th gen stuff. That's There's not a lot of stuff on this list, but we've got 1959 for the single core, which is pretty good, but the multi-core is what you really came for, right? Faster than a Threadripper 2990WX32 core. What? That's not the brand newest Threadripper, but still having something this small that can compete on that level. 31960 is the multi-core score. Are you playing along? How did you do? Let's have a look at Geekbench here. 2878 on the single core and 17534 on the multi-core. I'll scroll down so you can see all the tests. And then OpenCL, this is using the onboard GPU, 5573. And then again, there's all the individual tests. All right, let's take a look at Unigen Valley. This first test, I'm gonna use the 610M. That's the integrated graphics that come with it. It's not the crazy 780M or the 880M or whatever. It's not one of those crazy ones that can play Baldur's Gate. So, you know, if you wanna play games, you've got the PCI Express. So the FPS here is 20.8 at 1080p, score of 872, minimum 17.4 and a max of 34.1. So yeah, just basic integrated graphics. So it runs at about 88 degrees on full load. I've let this run for 17 minutes and 35 seconds at this point, and it's pretty much just flatlined at 88 with the Noctua fan on there. It's also extremely quiet because, again, we got the Noctua fan on there, and even though it's going full speed, uh, you barely hear it. So 88 degrees is maybe a tiny bit hotter than I would like, but also this is a really powerful CPU, and it's not going to be running like this when I'm doing just general stuff, only when I'm rendering. So it's within spec, but, you know, maybe a little bit warm. And over here, we're showing this thing screaming at us. Check that out. 
All right, so is the X3D worth it? Well, if they're similar in price, yeah, the X3D is going to be worth it. I'm not sure what's going on with the 1% lows in a few of those games, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on other than a tiny bit of the frequency advantage. But So yeah, this is one of the coolest little ITX size boards I've ever seen in my entire life. It runs a little warm, but it's within spec. And for me, it, it's nice and quiet. The case that I have this in is a little Cooler Master something box in R200, I think. And the case is getting very warm. So a lot warmer than it was before. I had a 5700X3D in that case before. And this, now the entire case gets warm. Like the, you put your hand on top and there's just like hot air coming out of there. So yeah, it's a little bit warm. Um, I might want to take off the heat sink and put a bigger one on there myself. Maybe that would uh, do, do a little bit better. But this is borderline too hot for me, but it's within spec and it works. And... You know, even the idle's decently high, but it's, like I said, it, it works, it's within spec. It'd be even hotter if it was in a laptop. So, and it's super quiet, but I do wish it was a little bit cooler. So in the future, I might uh, take the, the big heatsink off and put my own bigger heatsink on top of there and just keep it cool that way. So I haven't figured out if I'm gonna do that or not, but maybe I will. Anyway, but for now, we've got some hardware for sale. Head over to epicpants.com. These mice are half price right now with the coupon code Happy Mouse. And then I've got a little bit of hardware around here I'm going to be clearing out. So head on over there. Also, these are sold out. I've sold through so many of these. I've found a bunch of Windows uh, OEM packaged products. So yeah. So anyway, head over to epicpants.com and grab some of that stuff. Let me know what you think of this motherboard, and I'll see you in the comments.